NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, and its National Marine Fisheries Services, National Observer Program, invites you to take a journey to the world of America's fishing industry and the world of the fisheries observer. You will see what observers do and why their work is so very important. You will see what it's like to be on board commercial fishing vessels of all sizes, small vessels, as well as large fisher processor factory trawlers. You'll see fishing with long lines, potter trap gear, trawl nets, drift gill nets, and offshore scallop dredges. NOAA Fisheries helps to ensure that there will always be a supply of seafood for our nation's consumers and for those who make a living from the sea, while at the same time helping to protect the ocean environment and its endangered inhabitants. So come aboard and enjoy our deployment. See how you can take part in this most important work and how you can make a difference. our children or our children's children, what are they going to fish? They're going to have nothing. Scientists like Penny Pagels at Greenpeace think that time is running out, perhaps as early as the beginning of this century. They're only concerned with what they're going to earn this quarter. How much money am I going to make? What is this decision going to do to my pocketbook? And if you continue to have short-term interest playing a role in the sustainability of the resource, we're probably not going to be able to conserve Prior to the implementation of the Magnuson-Stevens Fishery Conservation and Management Act, up to 700 million pounds of untargeted fish were discarded in the North Pacific alone. This bycatch, as it is called, is a wasted resource. Authority to place fishery observers on commercial fishing vessels is provided through the Magnuson-Stevens Act, the Marine Mammal Protection Act, and the Endangered Species Act. NOAA Fisheries deploys fishery observers to collect catch data from U.S. commercial fishing and processing vessels. These observers monitor nearly 20 different fisheries. And observers are often the best means of collecting current data on the status of the fisheries and the condition of the ocean environment. It is the observer who is on the front lines of monitoring the fishing industry and thus helps to protect those who are affected by it, whether they are fish, sea mammals, birds, sea turtles, other marine life or humans, all are affected by fishing. And so, if we are to maintain sustainable fisheries, we must monitor how and where we fish. Nice job! Your day starts early on the dock. It's there that you meet the captain and crew of your assigned vessel. While the crew is busy preparing the vessel to get underway, repairing fishing gear, bringing food and supplies on board, loading ice in the hold, you have time to stow your gear in your cabin and get acquainted with the boat and her crew. Soon it's make way out of the harbor 
and the steam to the fishing grounds. Once you've cleared the harbor to the open sea, you may be treated to the traditional first meal at sea, which is usually something special. The steam out to the fishing grounds may take hours or days. But when the gear is set and it's time to haul on the first tow, you've got just enough time to grab a cup of coffee and get yourself ready to get down to the business of collecting data. You will tally the various species being caught and take measurements from a sample of the catch. Most fin fish lengths are measured in a straight line. While swordfish, marlins, sailfish, and spearfish are measured along the curvature of their body. Sea scallops are measured by their shell heights. And crabs are measured at the carapace width. Samples are taken of growth and aging structures, such as scales or otoliths, as this observer is doing. Otoliths are fish ear bones that are marked with alternating light and dark bands, much like the rings of a cross section of a tree. By counting the rings, one can determine the age of the fish. Volume measurements are taken to estimate the total haul. Sample weights are taken of the catch. And you may have to record the sex of the catch, as well as examine its stomach contents. Just as important as cataloging the catch is to collect data on the bycatch, those species not targeted by the vessel, but nonetheless are the victims of the fishing activities. Your watch, the period of time you are on duty, can be 6, 8, or 12 hours long. Then you are off duty for an equal period of time. At the end of your watch, you need to compile your paperwork. also be required to transmit the data each day via satellite. Then you can rest up for your next watch. Once the vessel catches its allotment, it's time to scrub down the boat from bow to stern and prepare for the trip home. It's a happy time after days and weeks of hard fishing and all await the arrival to port. Here we are entering the New Bedford Harbor with one of the nation's largest fishing fleets and a rich sailing history. First stop for the scalloper is the fish plate. The scallops, which were cut or shucked at sea, are washed with seawater, then stored in the hold in 40 to 50 pound muslin bags. Then they are hoisted to the scales where they are weighed and checked for size and quality. Here, hard work is rewarded with a paycheck, then it's home to the family until the next trip. Fishery observers work in waters from Dutch Harbor, Alaska, to New England and George's Banks, from Hawaii to Southern California to the Gulf of Mexico. You could be monitoring ground fishing, crabbing, scalloping, or shrimping. You could serve on different types and sizes of vessels, ranging from small boats 
to 200 foot processor trawlers. The drift gill net, typically one to a mile and a half long, is used at or below the surface to catch swordfish, tuna, or sharks. Floats make it buoyant, and a lightly weighted line allows it to hang loosely from the surface. Factory trawlers can haul in 60 tons of fish in one tow. That may be more than a smaller vessel catches in one season. The mouth of the trawl net is spread open by the forward motion of the trawl doors, hurting the fish into the cod end. Trawl gear is used to catch fish on the bottom and in the water column. The fish are cleaned and filleted by automation. Then they are plate frozen at minus 30 degrees, packaged and stored in the hold until the ship comes home. Byproducts like fish meal have many uses such as cat food. Scallop boats, ranging from 75 to 100 feet, use a 13 to 15 foot dredge. This dredge shaves the top of the ocean floor, collecting the scallops in the chain bag. Each one of the 18 tons of scallops caught are cut or shucked washed and stored on ice in muslin bags of 40 to 50 pounds weight. Long lines are to catch swordfish, tuna, sharks, and other finfish. Long liners have a main line of up to 20 miles in length, with hooks placed at fixed intervals. Pot or trap gear is bottom gear that is arranged in a series to form a string. It is used to catch crabs, lobsters, and fish. Trips last from one day to five or six weeks, depending on the fishery. Sometimes the seas will be like glass, and other times, well, it's not like glass. But on one thing you can be sure, you can usually count on good food and plenty of it. You'll have a warm place to sleep, and do other important things. From the powerful engines in their clean engine rooms to the modern wheelhouse, each boat is well equipped for today's competitive industry. Fishing vessels are equipped with the latest electronics, computerized navigation systems, depth finders, high-definition sonar that can see fish miles away, satellite communication, video deck monitoring systems, track line plotters that monitor past tow course and radar, all designed to keep fishing as safe and efficient as possible. Training is provided by all of the observer providers and NOAA Fisheries Science Centers, as well as some colleges. You'll be trained in species identification, CPR first aid, ship's radio communication, 
and water safety. Including the use of survival suits and life rafts. Classroom and laboratory training provides you with techniques and knowledge needed to do your job. You may be trained to test a new device, like the dehooker shown here, to help in the successful release of birds, sea mammals, and turtles. Nice job! You'll also receive training in the use of computer satellite communications, deck safety, as well as the seemingly endless paperwork. If you want more information on how you can become a certified fisheries observer and to obtain an application for employment, contact one of the observer providers on the screen. Observer candidates must have a bachelor's degree from an accredited college or university with a major in one of the natural sciences, a minimum of 30 semester hours or equivalent in applicable biological sciences and at least one undergraduate course in math or statistics and experience with data entry on computers. Relevant experience or training may be substituted for educational requirements. Candidates must complete the required training by passing written and or oral tests with an overall score of 80% or greater and must demonstrate the potential to collect accurate field data, exercise astuteness, and react to unfamiliar situations at sea in a professional manner. Qualification for sea duty will be determined by the National Marine Fisheries Service training examinations and staff assessments. All observer candidates must be a U.S. citizen or a non-citizen who has lived legally in the United States continuously for a minimum of three years. Candidates must demonstrate the ability to accurately collect, record, and tally biological data on marine mammals, seabirds, sea turtles, and fin fish, as well as collect biological samples from post-mortem animals. All candidates must have passed a physical and an eye examination within 12 months prior to deployment certifying that they do not have health or vision problems that would jeopardize their safety or the safety of others while at sea. When at sea, observers work in a self-paced capacity and must maintain the highest standards of conduct. Observers must maintain a professional, objective demeanor at all times. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you on board.